Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin in Tucson, Arizona. Thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate your time and also appreciate it if you take time to like, share, subscribe, and uh, just hang out. We put up videos every day of the week, just about, and uh, noon o'clock Tucson time. And so go ahead and stop by daily for some coin entertainment and aggravation. We're happy to have you with us. Uh, some housekeeping notes this week. Uh, this weekend, I will be in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and of course, we should probably just have a meet and greet with Donald in New Mexico. But we're gonna, we're <laughs> everyone come to Albuquerque so you can meet Donald. Uh, but I'll be at the Albuquerque Coin Show um, this weekend. I believe that dates are the 19, 20, and 21. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The Sunday show is just for a few hours, really, really. But uh, Friday, Saturday, Friday, I think starts around noon time. But it'll be a good time if you're going to be in the area stop on by. All right, uh, today we have a number of uh, comments, questions, answers, things to talk about. Uh, CAC announcing their member club. So basically, CAC is opening up submissions directly from consumers. You don't have to go through some knucklehead you found on YouTube. You can instead go ahead and directly submit things to CAC. Their membership is $100 for the year actually prorated, which I found to be really kind of a nice idea because I can guarantee you the other grading companies do not prorate things. So having said that, uh, you know, will you guys be joining the CAC club? Uh, for those of you who submit enough coins and buy enough coins, it might be worth your time to go ahead and do that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, to be able to submit directly to CAC or PCGS or NGC, you need to have a membership. Uh, they do have, generally speaking, all those companies have a dealership list versus just a membership from the public type list. And uh, it used to be, this is where things get a little dicey. So before NGC was bought out by a mega corporation, they ha it was a free to be a dealer with them but now they charge i think it's 129 a year or 199 a year i can't remember now it was probably 129 last year 199 this year and 350 next year but we'll see uh pcgs still does not charge its dealer members uh an annual fee but if you want to directly submit to ngc or pcgs or cac you have to sign up with them and pay them to do so but it actually usually works out okay because most of those membership fees come with free submissions. Of course, you're paying for the submissions with the price of membership. And so if you want to directly submit things to any of the grading companies, you can. You go to their websites and check it out and, and figure out how to do it. But, um, you know, generally, I say it's kind of a fun thing to try maybe once or twice to directly submit things. Uh, I do have the habit of saying more and more, don't get coins graded buy coins that are already graded. For those of you who are new to the hobby and you see a lot of guys doing crackouts, stuff like that on uh, on YouTube, you know, just don't fall for the hype. Enjoy coin collecting for what it is. Watch all of the other videos that are actually about coin collecting and not just about grading results and stuff. And uh, enjoy the hobby. All right, next up, we've got this other comment here from uh, Tylon Platinum saying, you know, uh, John Albanese, who is that uh, CAC, says that they don't do stickering because he did a test run and only 5% of uh, the coins passed. Uh, and that PCGS averages 33% and uh, or 35% and NGC 33%. By the way, they have a lot of stats and data if you can find it on their website. Um, I'm fascinated by this because I'm happy to get 5% of my coins stickered. Uh, but also, uh, you know, Thailand's calling BS on this. He doesn't think that's true. Um, I, I think the first time I interviewed John Albanese, he kind of mentioned that, you know, not enough coins got stickered. And so they're looking at too many coins without stickering them. And that was just considered to be a little bit of a waste of time. Uh, I I don't know. And, and he goes on to actually s suggest that maybe it's because he was involved with both those companies. You know, but... I, I just have a hard time finding that to be true. I mean, I guess I could ask him if I see him again sometime, but it just seems odd to me that he would not do Annex coins just because he had a tie to NGC or PCGS years ago. It's a little bit like, you know, having an old girlfriend and being like, well, you know, uh, honey, 
remember Lucy? So I don't think I don't think that John Albanese is really loyal to those companies all. In, in fact, he's I think in competition with them, quite in a, in a literal sense. So uh, the annex thing continues to be like one of the fun, fun, fun head scratchers for me in all of numismatics. The more I do this, the more I just don't understand, you know, how any of the world works. So uh, annex is another grading company for those of you who don't know that uh, has a holder that people don't like. They have a service that a lot of people really enjoy. They refuse to change their holder that nobody likes. If CAC would accept Annex coins, I think it would legitimize them in the marketplace immediately. And I think, Thailand, I think that's actually, in my mind, that's the reason, it, whether it's spoken or not. But, you know, if, if John Albanese at CAC starts stickering Annex coins, it legitimizes them in a marketplace in a way that they don't have currently. And uh, I find that to be kind of my my own opinion of why it doesn't happen. But you know, I'm just kind of spitballing on that. It's just, I should say I'm spitballing. I actually have thought through that a little bit. And I think that's, it just seems, it seems like they should just go ahead and sticker them. Anyway, I'll ask John sometime uh, one of these days. Typevic says, uh, explain rim filing, please. And what is the rim filer trying to do or gain? So this came from a video where we had some coins come back with rim filing on them. So rim filing is kind of like it sounds so on the rim of the coin you will see like a file mark on it so rim filing i think generally occurs one of two ways uh lots of times old coins or coins in general were used in jewelry and so there would be a little mount on them that someone had welded on and so in future generations someone came along and said i'm going to get rid of that they clip it off and they file it down and that leaves a file mark Lots of times they can be really small, and if you don't look at the third side of the coin, you can pretty easily miss a filing mark. Uh, occasionally they kind of go over the edge of the coin and you can see them, but if it's right on the rim, you might miss it completely. Uh, the other reason there could be rim filing marks is because you can have someone who uh, was actually trying to remove metal from the coin for their own personal gain. Like maybe they file a little bit of silver or gold off of every coin they see until they get a big old pile of dust. I don't know. That's just that's just one one thought. All right, next up. Doug, I'm new to the hobby and have purchased a few coins that are slabbed and some that are not. I'm unsure what to think about coins that are slabbed and indicate they have been cleaned. What does that do to the value of the coin in terms of what a dealer might be willing to pay for it? compared to the same coin with a straight grade. I don't plan to sell my coins because I like them, but when my collection passes to a family member, will they be able to sell them to a reputable dealer and at what discount? Thanks. All right, this is a really good question. So, uh, Doug, thanks for that. So, clean coins vary in market price. Just a lot of it depends on exactly how clean they look. So, in other words, you can have a coin that you know, half of us would look at and not call cleaned, and yet the grading company called cleaned. And that's kind of a different story than something that looks like a polished hubcap, in which usually those are coins that will be discounted quite a bit in the marketplace. So I have a friend who actually buys cleaned coins all the time. He likes them to be certified still and say cleaned on them. And his argument is, well, he knows what he's getting into. And so he doesn't have to worry about the argument people get into when they talk about an MS60 versus 62 versus 63 in the price point. He's happy to buy the coin as long as he thinks it looks nice still and it uh, is something that is going to be more affordable for him. Now, the coins will obviously be discounted in the marketplace, but they're discounted when you buy them and when you sell them. In other words, it's not like you're going to it's not like you're paying a premium for something and then your family's going to go to sell them later and get a huge discount. You're buying them at a discount already and they're going to sell them at more of a discount than you would uh, if it were a straight graded coin. If you're buying them for yourself and you enjoy them and you've already kind of expressed that you don't mind owning clean coins uh, and you're dead, it really doesn't matter a whole lot what happens with the coins afterwards. In other words, you've already made the commitment to buy these types of coins because you like them and you find them affordable and you don't care what other people think. And so for your family, 
they're going to get for, for them they're going to get for the coins what the coins are worth in the cleaned category and uh, as far as like discounts and volume of discounts you know it just depends once again we don't have a lot of information here about what type of coins Doug's buying but uh, you know the nice thing is that a lot of coins that are older and made out of silver or gold if you're buying them as a collector coin but they're cleaned oftentimes you're buying them very close to the gold spot price or the silver spot price anyway and then there's not a whole lot of variance it's really kind of a nice area to collect in a way uh, i know this is uh, you know apostate this is like the opposite of what people want to do in the coin market where everyone wants to buy the nicest coins they can uh, but there is some peace and harmony in getting out of the whole grading game which is what we've talked about with like for the last 10 minutes right so there's something that i really enjoy about just having coins and not having to worry about the grades on things and so actually this is fine there's nothing wrong with collecting coins that say cleaned on them and i wouldn't worry too much about what your family is going to get for the coins at the end of the day um i, I will say this this is i'm going to piggyback on this question with just general estate planning stuff uh you know of course we don't know when we're going to die but also uh, if you have been collecting or you collect for 20 or 30 years or longer and you are at an age where you are more likely to die sooner than not, shall we say, uh, then at that point you may want to consider selling your coins yourself before your kids or your spouse has to deal with it. Um, I'm at an age where someone's going to have to help take care of stuff if something happens to me now, right? But there will come a point in time when I've decided, you know what, I'm going to liquidate the things that I have and it makes the most sense for me to be as involved as possible in that versus trying to get your family to do it because your kids won't know, your wife won't know unless they are very, I mean, very actively buying with you. In other words, it's one thing when your kids or your wife go to a coin show with you once or a coin shop with you a couple times that's not the same as like they're actually actively out there with you you know giving you input and giving you feedback on the coins that you're buying that's a very different looking coin family relationship and i love seeing it at coin shows when spouses come shopping together uh, for a couple reasons one it's nice to have things to do together it's fun to have hobbies together but also realistically it's a great win-win for a family if both spouses actually know enough about the coins that if one of them dies, the other one can very actively sell things off without getting hosed. And uh, getting hosed is a Midwest term for getting screwed. It's just a nice way of saying things. So if you, um, if, if you tell a really bad joke, it can throw you off your own thought process and then derail the entire program. And that's what just happened right now. So anyway, so if you have if you are in the situation with the estate stuff and uh, estate planning and whatnot, um, just, just know that your family is going to have a very hard time selling your coins unless they're very actively involved with the coin collecting. And my best advice usually is to make sure that you already have a trusted dealer that you deal with on a regular basis or someone that you trust very, very much so within the industry. Maybe it's someone at Coin Club that you spend a lot of time with that you know will lead your spouse down the right path. And also realize this, they're not gonna get retail for their coins. Just explain that ahead of time. And depending on the type of the material that they have, you know, you can expect anything from, you know, half price to 90% of price, depending on the type of material it is you know, just set them up for that little bit of knowledge. Anyways, that's its own video. I could go on and on about that because I deal with I deal with this stuff all day long. So thank you everyone for being here today. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and you can watch some more videos on the right side of the screen. We'll catch you next time.